welcome to the Story Corner. I'm Kester, Chief Storyteller around here. And if you like a good story, you've come to the right place. Now, I wonder how you feel about aliens. Today, I'm going to be reading you a part of an alien encounter story. It's called The Find, and it's by Tina Raffa Mulligan. And it says on the front there, sometimes finders shouldn't be keepers. So let's dip in and find out what it's about. Tina has dedicated this book to the, McDerm the McDermott tribe and she says happy reading. Chapter one, a strange discovery. It was Jake's idea to go past the beach on the way home from school to look for proof of a spaceship crash landing in Pelican Bay. His sister Kate tried to talk him out of it when they met up with their twin cousins Daniel and Luke at the school gate after the siren at the end of the day. We have to go straight home, she said. That's the rule. Jake wasn't listening. Neither were Daniel and Luke. Daniel's eyes were bright with excitement. Good idea, he said, giving Jake a pat on the back. I reckon there'll be wreckage or something washed up on the beach. Luke nodded. The tide would have brought it in. We need to check it out. No, said Kate. Auntie will worry if we're late home. She'll think something's wrong. Jake shrugged. Don't come then. We'll go and it'll be your bad luck not being there if we do find proof of a spaceship crashed in the ocean. Kate shook her head. How could they believe that stupid story that was going around the school? Didn't they know the difference between fact and fantasy? Jodie Watson was always saying stuff to make kids think her life was more exciting than it was. As if she and her dad really saw a spaceship crash in the ocean while they were sitting on the jetty eating fish and chips last night. You won't find anything because there'll be nothing to find. Kate said and started to walk home, hoping her brothers and cousins would see sense and follow. They didn't. Instead, they began to head in the opposite direction. Kate stopped and stared after them. Now what should she do? If she arrived home alone, her aunt would want to know where they were. Kate didn't want to get them into trouble. She could win races at the school sports carnival. She could get every spelling word right on a test and do back bends and the splits, but she couldn't tell a lie if her life depended on it. Besides, ever since she and Jake had been staying with Auntie Jan and Uncle Laurie while their parents were making a film in Africa, Kate felt like it was her job to look after the others. She hurried to catch up with them. Wait for me! When they arrived at the beach, everything looked the way it always did. Late afternoon sunlight glinted on the calm water. There were no pelicans, but plenty of seagulls had gathered in groups on the shore or were squawking noisily as they flew about the jetty where a few people had cast their fishing lines into the water. People were riding bikes or walking along the beach path. A mum and two small children were building a sandcastle near the water's edge. See, said Kate, I told you it would be a waste of time. Don't you think everyone would know about it if a spaceship crashed into the bay last night? It would have been on the news. There'd be people swarming all over the beach, reporters and photographers, sticky beaks. She waved her arms about. There's nothing to find. Let's go home. If we hurry, we won't be too late. Well, we're here now, said Jake. We might as well check it out. He dumped his backpack on the grassy area above the shore and hurtled towards the jetty. Before the others could follow, he was jigging around on the sand, clutching one foot. What's wrong? asked Kate, rushing up. Kicked something. He dropped to the ground and began to dig. Got it, he said moments later. What? asked Daniel and Luke with one voice as they squatted on the sand beside their cousins. Dunno. Jake stared at what he found. It was the shape of a banana with the end cut off and the colour of the 1956 copper penny in his grandmother's coin collection. It looked dull 
so he polished it on his shirt. Now, when he held it up to catch the sunlight, it shone like gold. Wow, he breathed. What do you think this is? Daniel shrugged. No idea. Luke peered through his glasses at it. Hmm, <laughs> smells funny. What is it then? asked Kate. Luke frowned. Hmm, not really sure. Maybe. It's from the spaceship, Jake decided, his eyes wide. I reckon if we got the police, if we got the police divers in, they'd find the wreck. Maybe even drowned aliens, said Daniel. He shaded his eyes and stared out to sea. Kate stood up and dusted the sand from her hands. Get real. It's just junk. There was no crashed spaceship and there are no aliens. Come on, let's go home. The three boys made no move to leave. Jake studied, Luke studied the strange ob object. When you look closer, you can see it's got kind of markings on it. Probably alien writing. Jake put it close to his ear. It's beginning to make a really weird noise. S sort of like rice bubbles crackling and popping. And it's starting to get hot. He tossed it from hand to hand. Yowch! Dropping it on the sand, he sat down to re remove his socks and sneakers. Once they were off, he tucked the object inside one sock, wrapped the other around it and tucked the bundle inside one of his sneakers and stood up. I'll stash it in my backpack, he said. Let's get it home before it catches on fire or something. They ran all the way. And that is the end of the first chapter. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you would like to know what happens to Jake and Kate and the cousins, you might need to get yourself a copy of the book from either the local library or have a look in your local bookshop or see if you can find it online. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Bye.